My name is Andrea Clayton. I'm married to D'Angelo Bell. I'm originally from Person County. My parents are the late Thurman and Magnolia Clayton. My maternal grandparents are Rufus Blackwell and Inez Brooks Blackwell. My paternal grandparents were Monroe Clayton Jr. His wife was Addie Thomas Clayton. My paternal great-grandfather was Monroe Clayton Sr. And his wife was Penny Clayton. She was a cash. And they had seven children. She died and he married Sarah Bass and they had the balance of 20, 21 children, whatever that number is. There was a total of 21 children. I think they had like 14 children. Um, they were all landowners in Person County. My maternal great-grandparents were John Blackwell and Magnolia Blackwell. They had seven boys. My grandfather Rufus was one of those seven boys. They were landowners. My grandfather owned quite a lot of land in several, several different areas in Roxboro. All of his sons have continued those who are surviving and those who are deceased were also farmers and landowners. I have farmers, politicians, and civil rights activists on both sides of my family. If you're from Roxborough, I'm sure you've heard of Lindsay Peace. That's my mother's side of the family. There's also Lindsay Blackwell, who was very active in civil rights and in the process of getting the school systems integrated. I want to focus a little more on my father's family, the Claytons. My great grandfather, owned a farm in Person County, consisting of 290 plus acres of land. He was actually born in slavery. When slavery ended, he was two years old. He was born in 1862 and died in 1942. So he was 80 some years old, which was a pretty good life for a black man. That farm is now considered a century farm because it's still being used for farming by family members of his, the offspring. My great-grandfather and my grandfather were both involved with civil rights, voting, promoting voting, trying to get African Americans to vote. They were involved in Cedar Grove Association, uh, members of uh, New St. James Baptist Church. I think they were my great-grandfather was in the, a member of the East Cedar Grove Association for over 50 years. Now, my grandfather, Monroe Clayton Jr., bought an, a 123-plus acre farm the same year that his father purchased his last 93 acres of his 293-acre um, farm. That farm stayed, is still in the family, portions of it. Um, when he passed, which was before I was born, my dad had gone to college at North Carolina A&T. He was called away to go into the military, so he went into the military. When he came home, his father was sick, so he stayed there to help him with the farm. When he passed, my father decided he was going to try his hand at farming. Well, for a couple of years it worked, and then he decided he wanted to go north to see if he could get better employment. So they went to New Jersey and lived there. My brother was born in New Jersey and they came back home after several years there. My dad decided to farm. So he continued farming up until probably the late seventies, early eighties. And then with the plight of black farmers in America, I'm sure everybody's aware of that, he was unable to hold on to all of the property, so he sold the majority of it, but maintained the homestead and about five acres of land that is still in the family today. And actually, from my understanding from my cousin, Joan Clayton Davis, who is our historian, 
the farm has actually been in the family for over 100 years at this point. My dad um, worked public work all of my, he has, as long as I remember, he worked two jobs. He did public work and he did farm work. My mom was basically a stay at home mom until I think I was in fourth grade. And then she went out of the home and did some work at Steinthal and lock screen and then she came back to take care of her mom when she started having health issues but my dad up until probably I would say less than 10 years before he passed he did a little tinkering with farming he would plant a tobacco plant here or there he actually loved farming and that was supposed to have been his major had he graduated from a and he was an agriculture major um, they were very committed to their church. They loved the church. We started off as members of New St. James, which is my father's family church. Then over the years, my dad decided he would join my mom at Shady Hill. So I had my brother and I both had joined at New St. James, but we just I decided to go to Shady Hill with my mom. So my brother never moved his membership, but the three of us were members of Shady Hill. My dad was a trustee at both churches. My mom served in missionary work on the choir. They were just very devoted to their their religious life and were made sure that we were indoctrinated into that kind of life as well. My dad's oldest sister, she would probably kill me if she heard me say oldest sister, but it was his oldest sister. My aunt Wilma Clayton Bryant, she taught in Person County for over 40 years. My understanding is that she actually started teaching before she graduated from college. There was a time when once you reached eighth grade, you could teach. So because they did not have high schools for black students in Person County, my grandfather sent her and several of her siblings to Mary Potter in Henderson. And that's where she graduated from and then went to college. She attended both North Carolina Central and a and And I'm a little bit confused. I always thought she went to North Carolina Teachers College, but I'm getting some information that she went to a and So I'm not sure if it was undergraduate at Central which was North Carolina Teachers College, and maybe her master's at a and or vice versa. But she did attend both of those. And then, as I said, came back to Person County, was very active in organizations in Person County, was a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, my sorority, and actually worked as a teacher, as a substitute teacher, up until shortly before her death. So she had a great love for writing the English language and for teaching and children. She had the strongest personality. And, you know, the, the saying goes, you either love them or you hate them. Well, it's your choice. Um, she did so much good for so many people. She had a way with words that could sometimes make you very uncomfortable. But that was her. And we all learned that's Aunt Wilma. And those were the last words that we would say when she would say something that irritated us. We would just look at each other and say, that's Aunt Wilma. And that, that solved it. That's as nice as I can put it. I'm trying. <laughs> and that's what we would do. We would just say, that's Aunt Wilma, y'all. And we'd just keep going. My uncle, Dewey Clayton, who was a physician, the first black native physician in Person County, was very instrumental in getting the schools integrated. He filed the suit with Person County School Board, and it was settled in 1964. And in that year, his children, my brother, and several other family members were among the first class to go into, I think it was Morgan Street School then, to integrate. Um, Lindsey Black will play a role with that, um, with that lawsuit. Um, as I said, my uncle, the late Dewey Monroe Clayton, 
was very active in civil rights in Person County. He helped to integrate the schools. He also helped to integrate the hospital. He sued in 1946, I think it was, for admission into the UNC School of Medicine. He was denied. He later attended Meharry and graduated. When he came back to Person County, he saw the need and continued with his civil rights activism and um, black people were not allowed to have beds in Person Memorial Hospital. He didn't have privileges in the hospital, so he sued and he won that lawsuit to integrate the hospital as well. Um, Uncle Dewey, as I called him, was my physician from, he actually delivered me. And from that point until he died in 1977, he was my family doctor. Um, I feel a connection because he also attended Johnson C. Smith University, which that played a role in my desire because I was interested in the medical field and he was in the medical field and that was the route that he took. Um, I, I had a lot of experiences with him, some of which I don't remember because it was a long time ago. He was he died actually the year that I went to college um, in 1977. And it's a vivid memory because we had just been there for a family outing and he and my dad spent a very long time talking as we let, got ready to leave. And as soon as we got home, we got the call that he had drowned. That was what they said in the, in the sw family swimming pool. So that was kind of like an end to an era. And it, it was very devastating because I looked forward to going to Johnson C. Smith because I was the first from the family to go and follow in his footsteps. So. Uncle Dewey's wife, Christine Pope, well, Christine Arrington Pope Clayton, still resides at the home house um, on Kappa Drive. Love my Aunt Chris the sweetest woman you would ever meet. She was an educator, taught at Southern Junior High School when it was junior high, um, retired from that. And now she is a glowing young 94 years old, I think, and doing quite well. Her daughter, Christy, followed in her dad's footsteps. She was a medical doctor. She had an OBGYN clinic in Cary, North Carolina. Uncle William, that's my dad's baby brother. He was a county agent in, he started in Smithfield. He lived in Clayton, but I think most of his career was in Smithfield, North Carolina. Very quiet, unassuming, hysterically funny person. Um, lived a very full life that was tragically taken after he actually had gone to the Oxford Orphanage with his church to take some items to the children. And on the way back, a deer crossed the path of the van and he died in that accident. But yeah, he lived on the farm with my dad for a while actually. And we have pictures of him and my brother at the well drinking water. And he was, again, just like my dad, loved nature, loved growing things. And he did things like growing gardens out of grocery bags, just very innovative with the things that he did. He also worked as a substitute teacher after he retired as a county agent. My dad's brother that is closest to him, closest under him in age, was Uncle Thee, or T.T. as most people called him. He lived in, um, down in Warrington, North Carolina. He was an attorney. He also went to Johnson C. Smith University. His first law practice was in Warrington, where I don't think off the top of my head the name of the gentleman that he worked with, but he went on to be the first black attorney to integrate a law firm in North Carolina. After doing that, he settled one of the largest lawsuits of that time with J.P. Stevens and a group, I think, of over 4,000 people. That lawsuit actually ran for 20 years before they got resolution, but they did win. Uncle Thee was very quiet. 
um, loved family. We would have outings every summer out on the lake. He just loved having his family around him. Um, he had a person, a sense of humor too, but you had to get to know him because he was just very quiet, very meek. Um, I think that was one of the traits of the men in my, in my dad's family. They were all, if you didn't know them, you would think that they were reserved or whatever, but they were just quiet, easygoing. But once you get to know them, they were just hilarious. We had lots of fun. He and his wife, Eva, actually met at Johnson C. Smith. Um, I think he graduated in May and then they were married the following later that year in the winter or something like that. My Aunt Eva McPherson Clayton worked in Congress for quite a few years as a, um, in the House of Representative. She um, did a lot of groundwork in, in civil rights and in voter registration quietly and unassumingly for a lot of years. And it was kind of like people think all of a sudden that she just ran for Congress, but she, she didn't. She actually had worked for a lot of years doing groundwork. For a long time, it was on the back burner. Nobody knew what she was doing, but... Actually, her desire was to have been a medical doctor. She said she had no idea that she would have ever ended up in politics. But living in Warren County, which, you know, was a very impoverished area and black people were not always treated fairly. She saw the need and started doing things on a smaller scale. And then a seat came vacant in the House of Representatives and Someone suggested that she run, and I don't remember if she ran, if she won the first time that she ran, but I do know that she won and served for a lot of years. And after she retired from that, she started, she became an ambassador to Italy, where she worked with the agricultural department. It was very it was a proud moment for me because you look at on television and there's your aunt and she's doing big things. You look on television, she's standing there beside the president. So yeah, it was a proud moment for the entire family. I mean, she made all of us extremely proud. But the, the great thing is she never changed. She was the same person before she went to Congress as she was when she came back. She attended Johnson C. Smith. She is very devoted to Johnson C. Smith. And actually, she went back and made a big contribution to Johnson C. Smith. Um, Aunt Eva is still with us, and she is a very loving person. You would think sometimes because a person has reached certain heights in their career that they changed, but she's never changed. She, like Uncle Thee, loved having their family around. She would co-entertain with him at the lake. And since he's passed, she's made an effort to keep the Clayton family reunion tradition going in his memory. So um, one year, I think it was right before, right the year after he died, we she had it done at Uncle Dewey's house in Roxborough, but she plans every year to have that reunion in his honor. My dad's sis sister next to him was Aunt Clay T. I never met her. She died in a car accident. I think she was in her sophomore year at Fayetteville State University when the accident happened. She and my dad were passengers in a car and she was killed in that accident. And then there's my dad's baby sister, Aunt Celeste, Celestine Clayton Roberts, who lived in Virginia and was an art teacher there for many years before her passing, well, her retirement and passing. Um, she was born, when she was born, her mother passed in childbirth. So my grandfather um, raised her and all of the other children to adulthood, made sure all of his children attended college. Although he didn't have a college education, he was really an advocate for 
education. He was a very religious man, so he made sure his children were active in church. And that spirit has followed through the generations. Um, education started in my family at least th three generations ago. My great-grandfather's daughter, Julia, and another, at least one or two of her sisters were teachers. And then from the, the next generation was my Aunt Wilma and my Aunt Celestine and my Aunt um, Clayty, who was also going to be a teacher. And then the generation that followed included me, who ended up teaching as well. I taught for a total of 22 years, um, three years in Person County, two years two years in Person County, three years in Virginia, and then 14 years here in Forsyth County. My goal, originally when I went to Johnson C. Smith, I wanted to go into medicine. My dream was to be a pediatrician. Well, I thought school was really the most fun thing I'd ever done. I enjoyed myself. I didn't party, I worked and helped put myself through school. And when I graduated, I really was not where I needed to be to go to medical school. So I came home and I taught, well, I worked as a teacher's assistant for a year. And somebody said to me one day, you know, you could make twice the money you're making as a teacher. And I'm like, well, I'm not certified. And nobody had talked to me about getting certified. So I said, you know, you can go to Virginia and go in lateral entry. So that's what I did. And it was supposed to have been a five-year stint. And then I was going to come out and go to PA school. I started liking teaching. So I guess maybe that's where I was supposed to be. So I ended up coming out um, with medical issues at the end of 22 years, but I still substitute, so. It seems like on the Clayton side, we tend to lean toward agriculture and medicine. I, I don't know, there are other, agriculture, medicine, and law, and civil rights. Um, I have a couple of cousins who worked in, um, one worked with Roy Cooper's office, that was on Eva's grandson. Her son was in law. Um, and then several of the others have also done things in law. My brother farmed for a while, so that was that piece. And then um, Christy, of course, was a doctor. Then my cousin, Joyce Ann Clayton Nichols, who was another one that we're very proud of. She was the first African-American and the first woman to graduate from Duke's PA program and um, opened up her own clinic in the community, gave back a lot to the community. So we're proud of her. Then Linda Ann Clayton, who is a, a doctor in Tennessee, she was the first African-American female to have a subspecialty of gynecologic oncology studies. So she and her husband co-authored a book, two books as a matter of fact, talking about health disparities in African Americans. Linda Ann is the daughter of Burley Clayton, who was my grandfather's half-brother. And Burley was the son of Monroe Clayton Sr. Joan Davis Clayton is the daughter of Burley, the granddaughter of Monroe Sr., and the sister of Linda Ann. She's our family historian, and she has done all of the legwork in finding out about the farm's history and helping to get the farm be titled as a century farm. And in order to be entitled a century farm, the farm has to have been remained in family hands for at least 100 years and still be actively farmed. So right now they are farming it. They do pine tree farming. And she and several of her siblings are, the, are in charge of it. But I think they have a firm that actually manages it, but they are in charge of it. It's really amazing because growing up, you don't think about it. It happens around you and you see it and it doesn't mean anything until you get older and you start thinking about what inspired me. People say, what was, 
who was your um, role model? And I always said my role model was the tobacco field because I promised I would never work in tobacco and I would never marry a man who worked in tobacco. Those are two promises I kept. Um, so that motivated me to go to college. I knew that I had to get out and the way out was education. And although my dad never finished college, my mom went through high school. Her dream was to become a nurse, but she, her mom had some health issues, so she stayed home and helped take care of her. And actually, she did become a nurse in a sense because she took care of my grandmother for over 20 years. So it came to fruition, maybe not in terms of a title, but in, in action. Um, my dad was in agriculture all of his life, but he still believed in going to college. Whatever you do, you need to move forward. This is, if you stay in Roxborough, you're not going to have a fulfilled life. If you want to come back, that's fine, but go get you an education and come back. So, you know, that was just the spirit that was there. We were never really told about your great grandfather did this or so-and-so. We never were sat down and really told that, but we kind of knew it was there. And then I got older and we started looking at those who had passed on. And I think one of the ways, it's a little bit morbid, but one of the ways I found out a lot was in obituaries. Once somebody passed, you saw about all the things that they did and you were like, well, I know the, knew they did this, but I have never had an idea that they had done this. One example was my cousin, Lindsey Blackwell. I had no clue he had served in three branches of the military. Who serves in three branches of the military without having to? He did, and he wore it proudly. All of my father's brothers went to the military, and then they came home, so they served their country. Then they came home and got an education. I think what we need to look at is that Person County is rich in history. I don't think it's... it's magnified enough. I don't think we talk to our children enough. But when I look at my own history, I see I've got greatness from both sides. I've got family with roots that go back. I can trace it back three to four generations. I can actually trace my mom's family history back to Virginia, where they got off the ship at the ship Nottingham. So with Adolfo and you know we know all the African names and those are things that I probably learned in the last 10-15 years of my life and we need to let our children know where we come from because I, I believe if we don't know where we come from we don't feel propelled into the future because like I said although nobody ever set me down and told me the rich history that I had I feel like that played a role in me moving forward. And I also think we need to talk about it more in all of our families to know what Roxborough has produced. We've produced people who have done things all the way to the White House. And that's a pretty big thing when you look at the fact that everybody came from, as they would say, dirt farmers. And they worked their way up and they never gave up and accomplished great things.